Jakarta was rejected by every Silicon Valley investor for our Series A. Their reason? The market for cap table management software was far too small. Today, the Carta business brings over in over $400 million of ARR and continues to grow. It also serves as the backbone of private capital. So were those investors wrong? Maybe not. But why did we decide to go after such a small market in the first place? And how did we get to where we are today? Hi, everyone. My name is Vrishali Pounaker, and I'm the Chief Product Officer at Carta. Before this role, I was the de facto general manager for our fund administration business. For the past seven years, I have built, failed, persevered, succeeded, and everything in between. Building Carta has been a journey of a lifetime, and today I share my lessons. I'll talk to you about markets and why starting small is the right way to go. I'll talk to you about teams and matching the players to the play. And lastly, I'll talk to you about vision. It's important to have one, and it's important to know when to pivot. So let's get started. Carta was founded in 2012 to build the NASDAQ of private markets. But that's not where we started. We started here, digitizing paper stock certificates. We, need, we knew, the company was named eShares at the time, and we knew to build this private stock exchange, we needed to own the repository of private assets and the rails to transfer them. So we became the transfer agent. Cap table management was only the outcome of this first step. If we own the ledger of private assets for a company, that's the cap table. Cap table management became our first business and our first big step towards a much greater vision. We wanted to bring liquidity to the private markets so that founders could retain control over their companies for longer. Now, back to my original premise. Cap tables back in 2012 were the unsexiest of unsexy problems. I mean, it was really about putting a spreadsheet in the cloud. Moreover, the market for cap tables was very small because the main buyer were law firms. But we knew that cap table management was the first step towards a greater vision for Carta. We were also big believers in Peter Thiel's strategy to escape competition. In a popular talk that Peter Thiel did, he makes, called Competition is for Losers, he makes the case that every startup should aim for monopoly. And to do that, you need to solve the problems that no one else is willing to and avoid competition. He also talks about the right size of opportunity to go after, which is small, and then dominating that market and expanding. He gives several examples of companies that rose to success through this methodology. Companies like Amazon started as an online bookstore. Today, it's an online everything store, a cloud computing platform, a digital steaming platform, and oh yeah, an artificial intelligence company worth nearly $2 trillion. What about eBay? Started, as a, started off as a way to trade Pez dispensers online, and today is a, it's an e-commerce platform that hosts several auction businesses worth nearly $40 billion. And PayPal was a feature on top of eBay for the 20,000 power sellers. Today, it's a global money movement platform worth $80 billion. So what was our playbook? Well, it was to start with digital stock certificates and work our way up to the NASDAQ of private markets. But how? What came in between? We knew there were a lot of problems we needed to solve on our way to build a foundation and our path to the NASDAQ of private markets. Problems like, well, how do you price an asset? How do you get investors engaged on the platform? What about security or compliance? 
The private mar markets are opaque, inefficient, and inaccessible. We knew there were many businesses to build in our path to, to the greater vision. While mo most companies tout focus, we had to be the company that could spin many plates. But how did we know which opportunities to invest in? The role of the leadership team at Carter is to answer this question. We are capital allocators. Our job was to, is to balance the portfolio of bets on our path to solve for the greater vision. This slide came from a 2018 presentation that Henry Ward, our CEO, did for the company. He talks about how the role of the leadership team is to find the efficient frontier. We never had the luxury of one idea executed perfectly with focus could, that could lead us to scale. Instead, we were constantly paranoid that the markets that we were in would run out of oxygen, and we were constantly on search for new ones. As a leadership team, we planted a lot of seeds and then doubled down on the ones where we saw a signal. And we had to constantly rebalance our portfolio of investments between seed stage bets and growth stage bets. Eventually came an idea that became central to our investment thesis. The term N of one was coined by one of our investors in an essay they wrote about Carta. N of one ideas revolve around a, a central utility or resource that once captured allow you to expand the market for it. The capturing, the act of capturing this asset or this resource catapults innovation. From the outside, these ideas seem very small, but once you capture them, the, that's when the magic happens. The world changes around them and opportunities are unlocked, both for the company and for an ecosystem of builders around the company that come to rely on it as a central utility. In other words, N of one companies are ones where dominating, uh, where winning equals dominating the mar market. And N of one companies stand alone in their respective sectors instead of being one of many. So what was that central utility that we were trying to capture at Carta. It is an asset, a private market asset. We funded ideas to acquire assets, value assets, and transact on assets. Products like cap table management and fund administration allowed us to acquire assets. 409A and ASA 820 valuations allowed us to value assets. And workflows like Option exercises, capital calls, distributions allow us to transact on assets. Each product increases the likelihood of success of the other products, and again, that efficient frontier, all while making the repository of private assets a central utility. Building Carta as an infrastructure company wasn't just about placing the right bets. It was also about building the right team. If the atomic unit of Carta the company was an asset, or is an asset, the atomic unit for Carta the organization is a problem. We had to build a company of people with a unique ability to find the soft spots in the market and get after them with a certain intensity and zeal. At Carta, we talk a lot about principal agent problems. And the Wikipedia definition of principal agent problems is this. It's a problem that arises when one person can make decisions or take an action on behalf or, or that impacts another person. This usually leads to a conflict of interest between the agent, the person taking the action, and the principal, the person impacted by the action. A classic principal agent problem is between companies and employees. You see, most people have jobs. A job is a list of tasks that somebody does for someone else. At Carta and most other startups, they orient around problems. A problem is a puzzle that once solved creates state change in the world. 
Carta exists and startups exist to create state change in the world. We are building a company of principles. People show up to work as owners because ownership is not only our business, but it's our way of operating. Speaking of operation, if the role of the leadership team is capital allocation, then our teams are like startups. In 2016, Henry published a blog post called Founders Wanted that described the way that Carter was structured. Every time we found a new business that we wanted to invest in, we stood up a team that was led by a trifecta, a product leader, an engineering leader, and a business leader. This was our version of Dave McClure's hacker, hustler, and designer. We gave each of these teams a burn rate, but other or otherwise left them, uh, gave them complete autonomy to go solve these problems and create state change in the world. I was one of these founders myself. I had the opportunity to start our fund admin business from ground up, and today that business is over $100 million in ARR for the company. One of the other aspects that goes into team composition is making sure that we had the right type of expertise. We were operating in domains that are very complex. Here, we borrowed some ideas about team composition in service of innovation from David Epstein in his book, Range. We hired passionate domain experts who had a discomfort for the status quo and we paired them with the craftsmen, the craftspeople. These T-shaped teams consider these deep domain thinkers and then the wide systems thinkers, the people who could look across and do the pattern recognition. These teams became our secret sauce for innovation at the company. In fact, 50% of my product team was originally hired into one of these domain expert roles. Once you have the right people and the right structure, you have to create the culture around them. Here, we've been very intentional since the very beginning. In the early days, we captured company principles in an evolving document called the eShares 101. Some early principles included things like, do the right thing, data models first, cage match everything. But the things that remain constant since day one was building an environment where there was a focus on solving problems and always being helpful. One of the books that most influenced Henry, our CEO, and therefore Carter's culture was Loon Shots by Safi Bacall. The book talks about how as an organization grows, employees are put in a position where they have to make a decision about how best to use their, their time. Given an hour, do they spend that hour networking or solving problems? And you always want the answer to be to solve problems because networking to get ahead is where politics arise. We had to build a culture where solving problems was what got rewarded. And when people ask me what it takes to succeed at Carta, I tell them this, find the right problems to solve, Spend your time, your craft, and your, and your skills to relentlessly pursue solving that problem. And then tell people how you solve that problem or what you learned by trying. We built the infrastructure that supports this virtuous loop. At Carter, we write problem descriptions and not job descriptions because we're looking for people who are uniquely passionate and suited to solve the types of problems that we're grappling with. Every week we host show and tells and R&D reviews, which give our teams a forum to talk about problems and what, what they're learning. And lastly, we run the company in a wildly transparent way to promote that culture of ownership. One of the things that did change over time, though, was the types of teams that we were building. Again, we were a startup of startups, but one of the things we started to see in the last 18 months is that the incremental unit of investment was best spent connecting our products instead of building on top of our products. We had to build a connected platform instead of becoming a feature factory. And for that, we needed different kinds of people. 
our, our OG founder types started leaving the company. And while this was heartbreaking, we, need to, we needed to find the people who were excited about cleaning up messy platforms, teaching the company how to communicate and work with each other at scale. My own leadership team was completely transformed in the last 18 months, and I'm excited to conquer the next chapter of Carter's growth with them. So whatever happened to that dream of creating the NASDAQ of private capital? Well, if you were watching the tech news back in January of this year, that dream came to a theatrical end. Henry made the decision to shut down the business. Our ecosystem trades on a currency of trust. We could not continue to serve our founders and our funders, the people we called our customers, if we continued to pursue this dream. And the reality was, in the seven plus years we spent trying, we, didn't, we never figured out how to get secondary stock trading to work. We tried every flavor of this problem. Auctions, open tender offers, block trading, investor matching, and none of it worked. The only thing that worked was tender offers, which is a business we continue to support today. And more on top of that, we knew that this wasn't working for a long time. We weren't seeing the signs of product market fit. What we were learning, in fact, was that opacity and inaccessibility were features for, of the private markets for its current players instead of being bugs. And we weren't going to be the company that changed that. For some time, the company had no common vision that connected us all. We were a startup of startups, but no common identity. And then came Henry's light bulb moment. Along the way, we had built a lot of interesting businesses. And, and in addition to that, the premise of building a network business still stood very true. We had built for companies, we had built for capital allocators, and we had built for investors. When describing what Carta did to one of our investors, Mark Andreessen, Mark responded, oh, Henry, you're building NetSuite. And that was exactly right. Yes, we were building an ERP for private capital. The next three slides sum up the new vision for the company. So here we go. In every, nearly every industry, there is a software built for the office of the CFO. The Fortune 1000 CFOs have SAP financials. If you're a mid-market company like Carta, you're on NetSuite. Even small businesses have Zero or QuickBooks. But if you are a private fund CFO, you're running on Excel and a disparate set of tools because no one has given you a better solution. Until now. We are Carta. We're the network ERP for private capital. What started as a cap table management business gave us the right to win in fund administration, which lent itself to fund tax and so on and so forth. The business of private capital is multi-node and the ERP for private capital solves for each of these nodes. We are building products for companies, we are pro building products for investors and we're building products for capital allocators. The strength of the ERP is that central registry of assets, the central registry of private assets. Updates in one module of the ERP update all other modules across all other nodes of the ERP. And the ERP connects to a greater ecosystem of applications built for private capital, serving as a central utility. Today, we're big players in venture capital but this is a strategy we are bringing to private equity and so on and so forth. We will continue to build in concentric circles around our original position. Private capital is a $13 trillion opportunity and our work is just getting started. All right, to summarize, number one, have a big bold vision, but start small. Remember, 
it's not always about the size of the market. N of one opportunities are where you have the ability to dominate a market and there's state change that the world changes around it. So consider starting small. Two, I'd argue that the role of every executive team is capital allocation. How are you or your executive team thinking about balancing your portfolio of bets? Be intentional about this exercise, especially to match, this, match the stage of the business. Three, match your players to the play. We have a lot of OGs at Carta, and their institutional knowledge is invaluable. But as we approach the next chapter of Carter's growth, we need to bring in the people who have the know-how and the passion for scaling. And lastly, damn, this startup thing is really hard. You could get everything right and have it not work out. Don't be afraid to repackage your vision. Take, evaluate the path you're on and make sure it's still the right one. Take a look at what's working and what would it look like to double down. And there you have it. Building Carta has been the hardest thing I've ever done. Like excruciatingly hard, but also the most rewarding. So from one builder in a room full of others, thank you for listening.